everyone. My name is Hassan Salim and I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant of Canada and I do practice here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Now, as you all know, two weeks have passed and IRCC, I believe, is done sending out the invites for the PGP 2024 for this year. As you all know, it was uh, supposed to be 35,000 700 com applications and only 20,500 complete applications will be accepted out of those. So if you are one of those people who did receive an invite and are looking forward to sponsor your parents, make sure you don't make any mistake and send a complete application and send all the documents which are being requested by IRCC. And if you are looking to get some information related to PGP 2024 or the document checklist, watch this video till the very end so we can break down all the documents which are required. And if you want some information related to this program and want to set up a paid consultation, reach out on WhatsApp or send an email to set up an appointment and we can discuss your case as well. And I'll be more than happy to assist. So watch this video till the very end. We will break it down and make this process easier for all of you. Welcome back. So as I said in the intro of this video, we will be talking about the document checklist for the PGP 2024 program. I'm going to share my screen and uh, we will discuss all the documents which are mentioned on uh, the IMM 5771, which is the document checklist for this program. And uh, we can discuss how to go about those documents or the supporting documents or the forms which are mentioned right here. So the first document that you would be uploading obviously would be the document checklist itself um, and uh, secondly right after the document checklist it mentions the application to sponsor sponsorship agreement and undertaking 1344. So this form basically needs to be completed by you the sponsor and also if you have a co-signer first of all let me clear that out. Uh, because I've been getting a lot of inquiries who can be the co-signer on this application. Let me clear this up. It cannot be your sibling. It cannot be your friend. It cannot be your cousin. It can only be your spouse. Um, co-signer basically means in easy words, you can combine the income of yourself and your co-signer again, your spouse in order to meet the eligibility criteria that is for financial requirement of sponsoring the parents or grandparents that you are willing to sponsor. Um, that is pretty straightforward. Uh, the 1344 needs to be signed by you, your co-signer again, and also the principal applicant uh, from your parents. Uh, if it's your mom, if it's your dad, they need to sign this document as well. Then the third uh, document that is listed right here is the financial evalu evaluation for parents and grandparents, which is IMM 5768. Now, this is really important. You can either give the access to uh, CRA uh, of your tax returns or your income that you make and the IRCC can automatically check that out uh, rather than uh, you sending out the tax returns or uh, the notice of assessments of each year that is 2021 2022 2023 and also if you don't give the access to cra uh, to the ircc you would also need to fill up another form which is called the uh, imm 5748 but if you do give the access uh, to ircc for your cra account uh, then uh, you don't need to fill up the imm 5748 only 5768 is sufficient now the forms that uh, would be required to be filled by the principal applicant. Now remember these forms are online, they are available on the portal. Uh, so it needs to be the generic application for uh, form for Canada that is IMM0008. Again, when you're doing the application online, you would know what this form is. Uh, there is a digital form, uh, but now you can just do it on the portal directly and also the 5406 which is the additional family information that basically tells um, the relationships of the person. So the people you're sponsoring, so it's let's say your parents, so your father and your mother both need to have their own forms on the same portal uh, that you would be submitting the application and even if you are sponsoring uh, spon eligible uh, dependent children of your parents that is under 22 years old then uh, they would need to anyone over 18 years would need to fill these form as well again that would be the additional family information and the second one would be the 5669 and the third one would be 5562 
5669 is a background declaration, basically your employment history, your address history, um, and also if you were ever refused a visa in the past, many people kind of forget that. Um, you have to look into the options and make sure you mention if you ever got refused or rejected for a visa that you applied, not just for Canada, for any other country because it is a clear uh, misrepresentation case if you applied in the past and uh, totally forgot to mention that you were rejected or refused for a visa made be for Australia, made be for USA, made be for Malaysia, whatever country that is, or even Canada. Uh, you applied for study visa, you applied for visit visa and got refused, but you forget to mention right here on this application that is a big no-no. So don't do that, don't make the mistake um, and mention that um, in the forms that, especially the 5669, which will ask you for this information. And if you are uh, submitting the application on behalf of your parents, um, remember IMM 5476 is not just for the regulated consultants like me, but if you are representing your parents, uh, make sure you add that uh, document as well and mention that in some of the forms which uh, will ask you for this information. For example, IMM 008 will ask you if you have any representative on the file, write down the email address of that person and also the contact information of that person as well. Now, the supporting documents are pretty easy. Obviously, you would have to attach the uh, passports of the people you are sponsoring. Uh, again, if your parents are being sponsored, your father and your mother, both uh, passports would be required. And from your side, obviously, in order to prove you are a Canadian citizen or a PR, uh, one of those documents would be required as well in the uh, supporting documents uh, very straightforward again if you have a co-signer even if you don't if you're married you would have to support uh, the application with your marriage certificate and also the marriage certificate of your parents if uh, one of them has passed away um, you have to attach a death certificate as well um, in the supporting documents in order to prove the relationship of yourself with the parents, obviously your, uh, your birth certificate is required, which would mention the uh, names of your father and mother. So that would prove that you are in a genuine relationship. And uh, these are very basic documents. I'm sure everyone understands them. It's very clear, very easy to understand. And the one document that is sometimes confusing for people is the CV. I've heard this from a lot of people that, uh, for example, my mom or dad hasn't worked or have their own business or uh, don't have enough education, have always been a housewife, these kind of situations. Still make a resume, just mention the languages, for example, the contact information, if there is any education, even if it's secondary, mention that down. Uh, there is no specific format to that. Just uh, make a easy resume on Microsoft Word, convert it into PDF and attach it in the supporting documents. And if your parents have been in uh, any government institute uh, for their employment, you have to attach uh, the form for that as well. That is 0149. It doesn't apply to most of these situations, but if it does to you, make sure you do apply or submit this form along with the police service form if, you, if your parents were in the police uh, department or military experience, obviously there is a requirement of those forms, which is available on the 5771. You can look at it and obviously submit those documents. Now the photo, uh, obviously there are photo instructions. Um, you can attach either, you can either combine them or separately um, last name slash first name, uh, digital photo front, and uh, you can also attach digital photo back. Um, some people do it that way, some people combine it, so it's totally up to you. And uh, police certificates and medicals, obviously those are required, but those are not required at this moment. So whenever you uh, submit this complete application after some time, IRCC will reach out to you uh, and ask you for the medicals to be done and also the police clearance certificate for any country your parents have lived for more than six months after the age of 18. So if you do get the AOR after some time, that is acknowledgement of receipt, which means your application is complete and uh, has been received by IRCC, congratulations, and uh, start working on the uh, PCC 
again it will take some time it's a long process it's a two year journey so you have to be really patient with this uh, application but down the road they would definitely ask for pcc uh, again if your parents have lived for any lived in any country more than six months you would require uh, pcc from that country in case you cannot provide any of those uh, documents that have been listed here make sure you're writing an, uh, an explanation why you cannot provide that or why you don't have that document and uh, if you are still concerned about what documents to add and what documents not to add any extra documents you can again reach out to me for a paid consultation i will be more than happy to discuss your case and give you an honest advice about what i think of the situation so these were some of the documents again everyone is different everyone has a different scenario um, so there would be documents that you would want to attach just uh, think of those documents that will make sure that your application looks complete looks uh, up to date with all the requirements uh, of the IRCC and you end up being in those 20,500 complete applications that are uh, that will be accepted by IRCC for this wonderful program. I know a lot of people have been struggling to get the invite for the last three, four years. And a lot of people who have received the invites consider themselves very lucky because it is kind of a lottery system. And all of us want our parents to be here, not just for visit visa, not just on super visa, but in fact on PR. So uh, if you did get the invite, uh, don't make any mistakes, reach out to a licensed consultant. Uh, if not me, reach out to anyone, just make sure they are on the licensed consultant uh, list, which uh, we have. I do have the link right here in the description of my video as well. So best of luck, have a good one. Hopefully you learned something from this video. It was a very quick video. I just wanted to give you an idea of the document checklist. Uh, again, if there is any specific question from uh, one of those forms or in your own case, uh, which is kind of bothering you, reach out to me or reach out to anyone for help because this kind of chance does not come over and over again. So best of luck again, as I said, and uh, hopefully you would receive the AOR once you done once you are done submitting the application. Um, again, it takes some time for receiving all those kind of communication from IRCC, but hopefully you get it. So best of luck, take care, and uh, I'll get back to you with another video very soon. If you haven't done already, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on my Instagram and Facebook accounts for quicker information or reaching out to me with your questions. Have a great day.